Hello everyone and uh, welcome to, to our uh, last lecture in the series with Alexander Vaprinsky, the great Jewish composers of opera, operetta and Broadway. And uh, of course this lecture was supposed to happen last night, um, but we realized um, almost last moment that um, that our program would kind of conflict or coincide, I should say, with the community, large community event for uh, the com commemoration of Yom HaShoah. So we decided to postpone it until today. And, um, and I'm so happy that uh, a few of you were able to join us uh, this morning and listen to this very, very interesting uh, program about Jewish composers of these genres uh, that perished um, during the Shoah. And uh, Alexander, with no further ado, um, please tell us, um, tell us more about um, these composers and their music. Yeah, thank you, Tibi. I'm just, uh, it's too bad that I, I couldn't do this yesterday. It probably was, uh, would be more people. But it's okay. I would like to, yes, because of this, uh, you know, the Memorial Day, what we had yesterday. So I would like to talk about this, about six, actually six composers. I would like to squeeze in six composers, different composers, uh, but with the same end of life. Yeah. His career, his life was terminated by Nazis. Uh, just it happened like uh, to be that they uh, many of them are uh, you know a Czech uh, had the Czech background so this from the Czech <clears throat> descent so first composer was I just put this in order kind of order Urban Shulhov 1894 till August 1942 was a Czech composer and pianist who was born into German uh, Jewish family in Prague. Uh, his uh, great uncle also was a compo uh, composer and pianist. Uh, he, his style was like uh, close to, uh, he uh, in, influenced by jazz, and the uh, other uh, different rhythms of his of the century, and also he embraced the avant-garde influence of Dadaism. Dadaism, uh, you know, this is uh, to say to briefly to say what Dadaism means. That's that's kind of absurdity and and uh, surrealism, uh, and um, that's what they say proclaim like a kid who cannot just make this logical suggestion like a kid, just accident, incidental music, just accident, just write this, this, this note, then this note, then this note, he, he presses this, so that's how it is. Okay, so it's a little, yeah, uh, the, um, how to say, it's a reflection from the uh, First World War, um, Dadaism, just remember one of the uh, directions of the music that, that time, uh, brief, direction and reflections because they said that the, the kid kid is the only uh, perfect perfect thing that will happen to this world and that's how kid creates something that's supposed to be so if you see the kid uh, painting the uh, pictures like this you know making whole colors etc so that was in music as well um uh, his 1930s, uh, I mean, uh, Shulhov's 1930s concerto for string quartet, uh, quartet and wind orchestra is a, a fascinating invention of the traditional uh, concerto grosso style, obviously with this adding of this uh, 20th century and surrealism um, harmonies, if we can call them harmonies. Um, Hmm. Yes, yes, okay. But no melodies was, and no harmonies, that's what you mean. It's uh, yeah, it's just it's kind of, you know, of, uh, in, uh, accidental here and there, the sounds just, you know, 
um, kind of this. But uh, you know, let's, and, and he even, uh, just interested in the fact from the biography of Shulho, he was uh, very, very involved in, in this, in a communist view. He was influenced by this communist view and he even composed the music to the communist manifesto, you know, by Marx and Engels. No, this is, okay, he was composed this, okay? And uh, that was his, uh, I would say, point of view, okay? Well, it was the time but, and the age, so. Yes, because of his, yes, Jewish descent and his uh, radical uh, politics, Schulhoff wa uh, works was labeled degenerate and blacklisted by Nazis regime in the uh, 30s. Uh, taken refuge in Prague, he found a job as a radio pianist. He earned very little money, just wasn't money needed for When Nazis invaded Czechoslovakia, uh, uh, Shulhov had to perform under pseudonym. In 1941, Soviet Union uh, approved his petition for citizenship because he applied for citizenship to Soviet Union. But Shulhov was arrested before he could uh, just just let's say escape. In June 1941, Shulhoff was deported to uh, Wolfsburg. I don't know the pronounce W, Wolfsburg, Wolfsburg. Uh, in June, and, and yes, the deported and con concentration camp. He died there of tuberculosis in 1942. Uh, talking about his music, yes, I already a little bit, uh, it's so, just you can you can understand what the Dadaism means in this. In 1990, Shulhov composed so-called five pictures for piano. One of the movement it's called in in food, footer room, considered entirely entirely of uh, consisted entirely of rests. So silent. Yes, it's a 30 years before John Cage's famous four minutes, 33 seconds. <laughs> so he wrote this, you know, this detail of rest. Yes, at the premiere of his uh, 32 absurd variations, Shulhov almost got beaten by opposition. <laughs> so he, he just escaped, okay? But, but the, the futurists, the, the people who just was in this movement, they applaud, applauded. So oh, that, that okay. In 1924, he wrote five pieces for the uh, string quartet, which influenced big influence uh, dedicated dedicated to Mio, uh, and uh, by influenced by him. Okay, and uh, I would like to uh, uh, really this is one of the pieces which you uh, probably can digest. Uh, let's say. Uh, just very, very likely, uh, uh, like to share with you one of the pieces. That this is five pieces for string quartet. So few, few movements of this. It's uh, you know, it's really five pieces. So five movements of this string quartet, which I would like to share with you. Not five movements, obviously, but some of the music here. Okay, so that will be let's say here. Okay, so the beginning. It's called uh, the first movement uh, or the first piece called Viennese Waltz. Okay, and you will hear this the, the part of just kind of uh, Strauss's Waltz, the Waltz, uh, the uh, you know Viennese Waltz, but this really uh, <laughs> was uh, changes in, in changes. an odd fashion, I guess. Yes, it's not old fashioned. That's that's okay. You will hear the rhythm of the Waltz and just. You uh, judge yourself here. <laughs>
Okay. Next movement, next, next piece. That would be a Czech, Czech folk music. Here, the May I ask you, Alexander, to raise the volume on uh, the YouTube uh, clip? So you hear this, okay? And the last movement, it's called uh, Tarantella. So you will hear that the rhythm of talent, Tarantella. So the rhythms you can you can hear this. For example, in this in this Czech uh, music, you could hear this intonation, like like very uh, the folk intonations with obviously the harmony is absolutely you know it's a different century. Okay, Tarantella. Okay, so this is, that's what we're talking about, you know, urban Schulhoff. So when I said that this is your know, uh, uh, surrealism, so it's connections, it's obvious connections here to the second Viennese school, so-called. Second Viennese school, it's a school which was founded by three composers. It's Schoenberg, Berg, and Weber. You know? One, of, uh, two of them definitely, uh, def uh, definitely Jewish. <laughs> Schoenberg for sure. Okay, so, and uh, it was second Guinea school. What is second Guinea school? It's a very clear, the clear form. Yes, the clear form, what we have, the classical form. That's why they call Guinea school. And a very, I would say, eight, uh, eight analog music. So the music, eight analog, the serial music. Okay, and a lot, but, but Shulho has this more sense of tonality than the yes. It's It's only, influence of this school. So that's how it, it worked. This is 
Erwin Schulhoff, another composer. Uh, they composer, just I would say, the composer who uh, well known in Czech uh, in in all, all all over Europe. It was Victor Ullmann. Victor Ullmann, eighteen ninety eight till October 44. By the way, we will talk about October 1944. It's, it's a very, very, it's a date which is common for many Jewish composers who died there. Was an Austrian Jewish composer, conductor and pianist. Both his uh, parents were from Jewish families but had converted to Roman Catholicism before Victor's birth. One writer had described uh, Ullmann's surrounding in these terms. Like some other assimilated German speaking uh, Czech Jews, as Kafka or Mahler, Ullmann lived a life of uh, multitude uh, as, um, estrangeness, uh, uh, cut off from Czech nationalism, German anti Semitism, and Jewish orthodoxy. So at least, uh, it's called, in our uh, word, it's called a secular life. And it doesn't and didn't save him from the Nazis and, and the Hitlers. Uh, Oma's musical talent attracted attention of uh, Arnold Schoenberg. Remember this founder of this, uh, one of the founders of the second Guinea school, school of the 20th century. He studied Counterpoint and orchestration with Schoenberg attended his composition seminars. Uh, Ullmann was an excellent pianist, but he never had ambitions for uh, pursuing career as a soloist. In May 1990, uh, Ullmann stopped his study and left Vienna in order to devote himself fully to composition. He left, he went to Prague. Uh, and he also started to conduct from 1923 uh, till beginning of 1930s, Ullmann wrote numbers of successful compositions like seven songs with piano, seven serenades, uh, Schoenberg variations. After brief two years in Stuttgart, Germany, Ullmann was forced to flee Germany in mid-1933 because you know what, it's the, the Germans they came and ret uh, he returned to Prague as a musical music teacher and journalist. Uh, in his compositions of 1930s, uh, Ullmann gradually become more independent of Schoenberg's influence. And his style was dissonant harmonies, high musical expression and control of form structure because this is more control of form, uh, form, form structure. So the form like classical form more. On September 42, Ullmann was deported to Theresienstadt. By his, uh, by his deportation, Ullmann created over 50 different, over 50 different compositions. Most of those works uh, are missing. Only 13 was printed and uh, actually uh, uh, and hidden and was hidden at the friends' houses. They survived actually the 13 maybe pieces out of 50. Uh, Ullmann remained musical active at the Resenstadt. Uh, he was a piano accompanist, organized concerts, wrote uh, crit uh, critiques and composed. And few words about this at the Resenstadt. Uh, you probably know, who doesn't know this, uh, just to tell you that uh, uh, Germans uh, made this kind of uh, exemplary um, uh, exemplary uh, camp for propaganda purposes. So the, a lot of composers, painters, a lot of uh, poets, the Jewish poets, they were concentrated in this Theresienstadt, and and there were there were concerts, there were different different performances, etc., and, and exhibitions. So Germans show this all uh, to the to the Red Cross, the International Red Cross, to see uh, this. Look, Jewish people they they live this very nicely there, and uh, and uh, they even uh, made the film, propaganda film about the life of of this Theresienstadt. 
how nice and this the, the old is the, and they included many compositions of those composers in this as a music background after the film was done in 1944 in october Ullman, like others, was deported to Auschwitz-Birkenau, and in few days, he was killed in a gas chamber. That's how they worked, and it was propaganda. Hmm. Uh, yes, so Ullman's Theresienstadt works include three piano sonatas. That's he wrote in this is Kevin Theresienstadt. Three piano sonatas, three. Uh, third Quartet, Chamber, One Act Opera, The Emperor of Atlantis, or Disobedience of Death. The premiere was planned uh, in the autumn of 1944, but it never happened. Why? Because the censors, they, they, they sense, they sense that this, the emperor was uh, kind of a uh, reflection of Hitler. So they obviously couldn't let it uh, let it uh, do this, let it go. It was first premiered only in 1975. This Emperor of Atlantis in Amsterdam. Since then, all around the world, performances in different variants were performed. Okay, so I would like uh, he, he called this legend in four scenes rather than opera. Uh, Libretta by another Jewish by, uh, poet, Peter uh, Kin, who died, actually was killed at the age of 25. The whole opera is around 15 minutes. I would like to show you collage, the musical collage, collage of this uh, of this opera. It just takes uh, not not much time. So just listen to this. Der Kaiser von Atlantis, so Emperor of Atlantis. It's musical collage, it's a different scenes from this. Just a few words before we, we proceed. Okay, so so there there the characters there seven characters whatsoever. This the the emperor, the soldier, uh, the uh, the death, uh, and Harley Harley Keen. Actually, they the people why they in this mass because it, it's done like like kind of a reflection of opera dell'arte, the the Italian opera dell'arte. So in this style. So this is uh, and philosophical and also satirical, kind of, you know, hidden there, okay? I 
Okay, so so that's your <clears throat> the highlights of the opera. Yes, highlights and I say collection. Okay, so anyways, so he, it reminds me of, of Berg's opera uh, Watzik. Uh, however, here is is more I would say melodic. <laughs> How would you say than than in in uh, opera uh, Watzik, the famous opera. Another composer. It's Hans Krasse, uh, maybe the brightest of, uh, of them, the, the most, you know, I would say, have it. was a Czech Jewish composer. His father was a Czech Jew and mother a German Jewish. From childhood, he studied piano and violin and then went to the study composition at the German Music Academy in Prague. Krasse was influenced by Mahler, Schoenberg, and French composers from the group of six, group of six, that was in the beginning, the 20th to 30th of the 20th century. Uh, Eric Satie, if you remember, so if you recall. From 1927, Krasa lived in Berlin. His, uh, his one um, composition was four orchestral songs, have had a good success. He also wrote a symphony for small orchestra. But Krasa's major work was the opera Betrothal in a Dream after the Dostoevsky's novel Uncle's Dream. This work was first performed in Prague in 1933 and was awarded the Czechoslovak State Prize. Plus, Krasa's last work was a children's opera, Brundebar, based on play by uh, Aristophanes. He completed it just before he was arrested on 10th of August 1942 and sent to Theresienstadt Ghetto. The opera then was performed over 50 times in the camp, ex excerpts uh, featuring in the Nazi pro propaganda film made for Red Cross. That's what I mentioned already. In 1944, along with other Jewish composers, Krasa was taken to Auschwitz. Later on, he was murdered on a, in October, in October 1944. Remember, not being uh, even 45 year old. So uh, you see, this the fate is very similar between those composers. Uh, I would like to to hear this uh, to uh, show you this highlights or I would say collage of different scenes uh, from uh, Verloben uh, in. In Traum, so betrothal in a dream. Uh, this is one uh, one episode, but the most okay. I would just let's do this step by step because we, uh, because I am really um, yes. Uh, let's say here. Okay, so that will be. The, Yes, Nichts. Wie ist kalt wie ein Stein. 
hat ihre unsterbliche Seele verloren. Hätt ich sie nicht bewahrt in meinen toten Akten, sie wäre nie gewesen. Okay, so this is kind of phantasmagoric picture here. All of the, you know, like the, the dream of that uh, old gentleman and, and obviously made by, uh, made in this expressionist way, like, uh, like Richard Strauss or, the, uh, or even um, Schoenberg. And you can hear obviously this intonations of this. Uh, however, Dostoevsky just wrote this. It's, it's, it's obviously uh, re, reworked uh, this idea the same the the plot is the same but but it's the different different uh, absolutely idea here and uh, different thing okay so but most of all i would like to uh, to uh, show you this work and this work is a really interesting work this is a brundebar brundebar by the way means bumblebee and this is, uh, yes, so it's a children's opera. And when you hear it, I just would like to, to, to show you this in the music, it's very nice. And when you hear it, you can, you can obviously uh, understand. So this is, a, it was obviously forbidden because it's many, many people say that the uh, Brundebars, uh, it was, uh, it was hind, uh, hind uh, they, they hint uh, the uh, Hitler again, just, was him. So, um, no, listen yourself, this few episodes, what I would like to show you, okay? This is the beginning of the opera. This uh, opera is about two children, two children who, uh, they, are young, uh, they are young children whose mother become ill and they are uh, they poor, they, mother needs milk because the doctor said the mother needs milk and they went to the market and they cannot buy milk. And they started to collect money, but uh, Brundebar doesn't give them uh, uh, anything to do. And eventually, eventually they, they pre prevail, they, they get milk, um, but then you will see the end of this opera. This is different. This already opera was staged, obviously, after the war and um, with, uh, I would say, different, different ending. the memory of children. Yellow star. Okay. Everyone calls me Pepper Jack. I lost my daddy, now he's dead. This is my sister Aninka. Our sick mother is home in bed. Doctor came in the day was cold. He will be glad. To us, don't make such noise. Look at slip at your mother's knee. Go buy some for her, go with speed.
Here's the Brunde bar. When I play and turn this handle, sing with me, don't make a scandal. Don't you like my music? Make it out of your or you'll be aching. Of this show, I am the star. I organ grind a Brunde which is very, very, I would say, touching, and you will see now why. Baby chick, what can be done? Yeah, okay, so, so, this is... That old man at least is gone. Hit, hit there, and after all... It's so late. Not so fast! Just wait a second. Not before my bees been reckoned. I work here. What's in that cap? I think I'll take it. That's a wrap. Belongs to me. It can't be spent. This is my street. Pay me rent.
must go home, but wait! Don't say goodnight as yet. We'll send you on your way when we have sung once more our song with you today. We won a victory over the tyrant queen. Santa, it's beautiful, man, sure, sure is he. We won a victory since we were not careful. Since we were not careful. The good is overthrown, but we were not alone. That's the point of it. Children big and small. The kids and all the animals, they, 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 they get together, got together, and they overpowered this Brundebar. And you see, this is the, this is the ending of the show. Birkenau, 10 years old. Nisim Bello, Treblinka, 9 years old. Esther Farkas, Auschwitz, 2 years old. Maria Chigrin, Treblinka, 8 years old. Jakob Fisch, Auschwitz, 10 years old. Pibik Winkler, Belzec, 5 years old. Ava Briskina, Kislavici, 7 years old. Gita Eisert, Chernovitz, 4 years old. Miriam Braina, Auschwitz, 3 years old. Bronia Forschman, Babiar, Eight years old. Tommy Coleman, Auschwitz, nine years old. So you understand this. It's very tough to, to <laughs> cut this short, but it's, you know, like, like Yad Vashem. It's the same, you know, the ideas in the end of this opera. So the, the, the reading of the names, of course. Yes, yes. Pay tribute to, to those kids who died. Who sure. actually were, were killed okay so and this is the very end so they they again they sing this they sing they uh this <laughs> Okay, so you see, that's very touching. Yes, so it uh, would be nice to stage somewhere this opera here because this is this is very interesting. You know, to me, it's uh, very interesting material and uh, real nice music and uh, all of this idea. Uh, anyways, next composer. Yes, if I have to hurry up. Gideon Klein was a Czech composer, pianist, educator, and organizer, uh, organizer of cultural life uh, of the Theresienstadt, again, concentration camp. Uh, he was born in, in a Moravian Jewish, Moravian Jewish family, showed musical talent early to study and, and uh, you know, composition uh, as a pianist. Uh, Klein was forced to stop his education in 1940 when the Nazis closed uh, all institutions 
uh, following their occupation uh, of uh, Czechoslovakia in 1939. Uh, by the way, he was born in 1919. So you can count how many years he died in 1945. Yeah. So basically being 35 year old. Okay, so, and he was arrested in December 1941. Okay, Erezenstadt, he was, again, he was the, with, the, with the Omen and, and Krasa. They composed, they become a major composers at the camp, one of the majors. <clears throat> uh, his music was influenced by uh, Schoenberg, uh, and again, and especially Leos Jan Janacek. Leos Janáček, it's a great composer, the Czech composer of the 20th century, uh, the Czech composer, uh, and uh, they regard the Czech, uh, regard them as well as a Dvorak and, and Smetana. So it's two composers of 19th century versus the composer. This is the Leos Janáček, uh, who was the, let's say, the great composer of the 20th century. Um, I would like to uh, share one piece because the time is, you know, short. Lullaby of Jew, uh, so uh, so arrangement of Jewish lullaby, actually, like a, a lullaby, Jewish lullaby by this uh, Gideon Klein. I have to share with you. Okay, so uh, I have to I have to do this and this because it's. It's very nice. That's that's a version uh, with uh, a Just entrusted this to to and uh, to hit his composition to save them for the future because the Germans they just uh, well this is not Klein's it. composition this is just his arrangement just his arrangement of the Jewish law but it's beautiful just yes. beautiful yes I I could show his uh, original but this time you see this we have to have to look at the <laughs> and watch all the time it's mm -hmm. just uh, two composers uh, left and a uh, Pavel Haas. Pavel Haas, 1899 till again October 1944. 
was a Czech composer. He was one of the composers of the uh, Leos Janáček school. He was his student, actually. He also used elements of jazz and folk music in his works. Haas is notable for his song cycles and string quartets. He was born in Brno into a Jewish family. After studying piano privately, Haas studied at the Brno Conservatory composition. After that, he studied in the master class of the famous Czech composer Leos Janáček. He, uh, who became uh, for him the most influent teacher and Haas was his best student. student. Of the more than 50 works Haas wrote during the next two decades, only 18 survived. Very, uh, he was actually very critical to himself. He just uh, destroyed many of the, his composition. Among them, some, uh, among the survival compositions, uh, symphonic choral works, leader chamber music, scores for cinema uh, theater. His opera, Charlatan, was first performed in Brno, was a great success, Charlatan. You know what the Charlatan is? Charlatan is the, 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 the crook, it's just a guy, just is, oh. you know, he's a, he's a very, <laughs> Uh, you know, this uh, a thief, a crook. A crook, a crook, yes. As yes. yes. was one of several Czech composers deported in Theresienstadt, and this is the same, the same fate. And he wrote there uh, many compositions as well. Four songs uh, uh, among them, four songs on Chinese poetry for uh, baritone and piano, a work for men's choir, uh, and all Sfod. His first, Al Swot, sorry, Al Swot, Swot, his first and only work in Hebrew. And the study for string orchestra. When the propaganda project was over, Nazis transfer him. This is the same, the same transfer to the uh, to the Auschwitz Birkenau, and he was killed there. Uh, is it yes? So. I would like to, to show you this, just to share with you the string quartet from the, the movie, he wrote the string quartet, it's a music to the movie of Monkey Mountains. This is movie, it was uh, the string quartet. So the fourth movement, just a very, very, uh, very brief. I would like to show you this string quartet and the fourth movement here. I would like to uh, share with you. Yeah, mm -hmm. good. Here we go. Listen to this. Look at the string quartet, but not on the string quartet. This percussion here.
Okay. So, and the last but not the least composer and composer who you actually know, it's a composer. Uh, we can't call this composer, but it's a, the songwriter is the famous Mordechai Gebertik. So what's the difference between a songwriter and a composer? I would say, uh, I would say like this, uh, just listen to this. Finally, I found a question. No. Yes, that's a good thing. But uh, <laughs> see, first of all, first of all, he wasn't a professional composer. He was a uh, carpenter, a carpenter. That's how he earned his life, you know, this, uh, the money. Okay, he was a carpenter, but he liked music. He he wrote poetry. He wrote a lot of poetry in his uh, spare time. And he played piano with one finger. That's what they said. And he played one finger. He just, uh, uh, okay. And nevertheless, he created such a, uh, you know, such a very popular Yiddish songs as Brent, Razelin, Moishele, my friend, Kinder Jorn. So it's a lot of, you know, those uh, very, uh, very uh, names which you, actually no so who are we talking about mordechai gebertik that's what i say mordechai gebertik i i just said it 1877 to june 1942 he was influential of a yiddish poet and songwriter author of still popular yiddish song he was uh, like the, what i named this he was born in krakow poland and lived in its Jewish working class quarter towards all his life. He served five years in the Austro-Hungarian Austro army. Uh, Gebertik was self-taught in music, played the shepherd's pie and piano with one finger. Gebertik uh, earned his money as a carpenter. That was this was his, while music and poetry was his passion. From 1906, he was a member of Jewish amateur troupe in Krakow. He wrote his songs and theaters reviews for Jewish Social Democratic Party magazine, where he expressed his views. In his music, Gebertik conti continues the uh, musical traditions of the popular uh, Galician uh, uh, cabaret, entertained uh, derived from yet older and still vital tradition of the uh, Bachens. Uh, Vatican, so the uh, wedding gestures, yes, gestures, uh, in, uh, improvisatory arts. So, the, you know, the Vatican's tradition, that's all improvisations. Uh, so, adopted by a leading Yiddish artist such as Molly Pekin, uh, Gebertic's song became an uh, important part of Yiddish theater productions around the world. His life ended in the Nazi shooting action carried out in the Krakow ghetto on bloody Thursday, June 4, 1942. Okay, so I would like just to share one song in the end, which you all know, and I think this song just will show you everything as Brent. <laughs> Es brennt, Friedenlach, es brennt. Wo unser Arm steht, nebig brennt. Weise Winden mit ihr Gossen reißen, brechen und sie blossen. Starker noch die wilde Flammen. Als er schon brennt, und ihr steht und guckt, dass er sich mit verlegte Hand. Und ihr steht und guckt, dass er sich unser Städtel brennt. Es brennt, es brennt, wo unser Arm steht und er doch 
Es brennt, die Hilf ist nur in euch allein gewähnt. Oi, das Städtel ist euch teuer, nehmt die Kehlen, löscht das Feuer, löscht mit Eier eigen Blut, beweist, dass ihr das kennt. Steht nicht, Brüder, Verlegte Hände, steht nicht Brüder, löscht das Feuer, unser Städter brennt. Es brennt, es brennt, es brennt. Okay. Very, very moving uh, rendition. Very moving. So Can I, I ask you? Say six composers yeah. who just, yeah. you know, it, it's very pity. And they, they, they were terminated their life and they could develop and then maybe mm -hmm. they become a great composer because, especially in this, is Brundebar, the opera, and some of the pieces they, they show that they could grow and grow and grow. Unfortunately, that's what the history is. And we never supposed to forget about the history yes yeah, somebody is asking on the chat if you could maybe post the link of this last video um on maybe in the chat right here but i want to ask you a question um just to move a little bit away from the yeah. Yeah. real sadness of 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 the topic really uh does anyone know let's put this, this is a thirty six thousand dollar question here uh who was the cantor who sang this song on the recording? Anyone? Raise your hand, wave. No? Wow, that was cantor Paul Zim, brother of cantor Solzim. They're both very, very famous cantors. Solzim wrote the very famous prayer for Israel that we love to sing. Avinu, Avinu. And Paul Zim, who was a cantor in Ottawa for many years, he he's also uh, and he he was uh, in part of many movies as well. But you could hear that beautiful beautiful tenor voice he has, and right on the pitch, Alexander. I, how often that happens with cantors? Anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the techniques now it's a good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I just want um, a couple of final thoughts to. To this whole lecture series to so thank you very much for for doing this for us uh, you're a, an amazing source of knowledge of musical knowledge and particularly classical music knowledge as you you showed us you proved it to us in these six lessons or, or sessions and we learned we learned so much um, we yeah, learned if you think back in january my uh, uh, meyer beer yes meyer beer and yes. uh, uh, the last one who used a, what kind of a voice in an opera? A castrato, yes? That's it. You see, I remember something. Um, Offenbach, yes? Beautiful music. Also, uh, George Gershwin, Imre or Emmerich Kalman, and Lern Leonard Bernstein, and of course today, um, all these wonderful composers. Uh, you mentioned six of them, but um, you better believe it, they were 
way, way, way more than six composers, unfortunately, that perished in the Holocaust. And with them, their music, and and who knows where we would be today um, from a heritage point of view, from a musical heritage, if we could have preserved all this. If we would have the technology to scan all that music, to to hide it, to put it in libraries and and make it available for the future. Um, music just uh, you know what they say that about um, ninety percent. Well, this is not classical music. About ninety percent of Hasidic music, our our religious and folk music that that uh, we had before the Shoah was lost. All we have is about ten percent that it was, and that's that's a that's a very strange, alarming, and 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 weird fact, really. Um, so again, thank you very much. We've learned really, really so much from you, Alexander. But I want to thank also Musica Batikva. Uh, it's a program brought by Musica, and uh, it's not an easy time to create programs musical lectures or series and and uh, forget about concerts that's really pretty much impossible right now i don't even think the government allows us to to have even a, a virtual concert at this point as far as i know the regulations but we're trying to do as much as possible and musica betikva definitely is trying to do that thanks to marsha rosen who's our chair and all the other members of this committee who are working tirelessly to bring us music. Um, stay tuned. Stay tuned to all our programming and services at Bet Tikva. And if you have nothing better to do today at 6 p.m., then please join us either on Zoom or on YouTube at our very, very musical Kabbalah Shabbat. Um, and sing along with me and our three-piece band um uh, we love doing this and i'm sure i can see it on your faces when you're on kabbalah shabbat you're loving uh, singing along and sometimes even dancing along um tomorrow morning services live from beth tikva sanctuary at 9 a.m for a very very limited in-person crowd but everyone else, welcome to join from your homes, living rooms, uh, backyards, wherever you feel comfortable to, um, to join these services. And um, I wish you all a peaceful and um, harmonious, yes, it's a music program, uh, harmonious Shabbat. Um, and hope to see you at 6 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Alexander. Shabbat Shalom. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Thanks. Bye-bye.